All right, so when we do cylindrical grinding, let's do cylindrical plunge grinding. So we've got our wheel, and we plunge in like that. And we need a measure of productivity. So let's take an example if we went to a company, and let's say we went over to Joe's machine. And Joe was doing cylindrical grinding, and he was doing a 10 millimeter diameter workpiece, and he was plunging in at three millimeters a minute. Now let's say we went over to Jacques' machine. And Jacques was running five millimeter parts. And he was plunging in at five millimeters a minute. And then we went over to Jose's machine. So Jose's grinding 50 millimeter parts. And he's going at one millimeter a minute. And then we go over to Jimbo's machine. And Jimbo's doing 25 millimeter parts. And he's going at 1.5 millimeters a minute. Now, who's the most productive of all these guys? So we go over to Joe and, uh, and Jacques. And Jacques obviously feels like he's doing better than Joe because he's going at 5 millimeters a minute. And Joe's being wimpy at only 3. But then they both look at Jose, and he's only going at one millimeter a minute, and they go, oh, Jose, that's pathetic, only one millimeter a minute. And they look at Jimbo, and they go, ah, Jimbo's kind of wimpy too. He's only at 1.5 millimeters a minute. So a better measure of productivity than trying to look at feed rates is what is called Q prime, like that. Q prime is measured in millimeters squared per second. And that's pi times the diameter of the workpiece in millimeters times the plunge velocity in millimeters per second. And that's a better measure of productivity than just looking at feed rates. Because look at all these different wheel diameters. So if we plug in there, we get Q primes values for Joe of 1.6 millimeters squared per second. Jacques is at 1.3 millimeters squared per second. Jose is at 2.6. And Jimbo is at 2.0. So that's what we have for the productivity of each of these guys. So if you look at it this way, all of a sudden, well, Jacques, who was feeling like he was hot stuff at five millimeters a minute, all of a sudden isn't looking so good. Jose, who was only at one millimeter a minute, is actually doing pretty well when you consider the diameter of his workpiece. And Jimbo is there at 2.0 millimeters squared per second. So the Q prime value is a better measure of productivity or better measure of how you're doing than feed rates. And what I encourage my customers to do uh, in my high intensity grinding course or in my boot camps is to pick a Q prime that's respectable, do a survey of what you're doing in the, in the uh, factory at, uh, on your roughing operations. Say, all right, well, we're gonna go at a Q prime of three, let's say. And then you get everyone in that ballpark uh, of three so they know their wheel, their workpiece diameter, they choose their plunge speed to give a Q prime of three, and that gives them more consistent results, more consistent productivity, a better measure of productivity. Some of my customers actually have their machines programmed to achieve some specific Q prime, so they put in a Q prime of two or three, and then the CNC program actually comes over and calculates what your plunge speed should be. So I'm a big believer of Q prime, not just for cylindrical grinding, but for all types of grinding. It's just a better measure of how you're doing than feed rates. And of course, you gotta keep in mind, millimeters a minute versus millimeters per second. If you wanna get from millimeters a minute to millimeters per second, you're gonna have to divide by 60.